Hey guys, what's happening? John the Realtor here and welcome to part two of the residential purchase agreement series. I noticed that in the last video, the, uh, ver the words on the page look kind of blurry. So I zoomed in a little bit on the um, agreement here. <clears throat> now, one thing I didn't mention in the last video is after the, um, uh, at the end of the disclosure, it says that this disclosure form includes the provisions of the sections inclusive in the civil code. So page two of the uh, agency relationship is uh, the uh, civil code, the California civil code that I definitely encourage you to read. And um, I encourage though, any buyer to read and to look over because they need to be well informed as well as ourselves. So, but for this video, we are gonna go for the fair housing and discriminatory advisory. Believe it or not, even in 2022, almost 2023, discrimination still happens and uh, fair housing uh, rules are broken. So basically uh, the way I explain it to clients is, look, if you can breathe and you qualify, there's no reason why you shouldn't buy the house. Um, unfortunately, um, it can't be explained that way. So uh, we'll go over this here. And there's a lot of civil code sections that it references to. So a lot of um, separate sections because there's so many different areas of discrimination that you gotta be really careful about it. So equal access to housing for all. All housing in California is available to all persons. Discrimination as noted below is prohibited by law. Resources are available uh, for those who have experienced unequal treatment. So remember, um, if, if, you've, uh, if you're a buyer watching this and you feel that you've experienced um, you know, um, uh, unequal treatment, definitely uh, make it known because it shouldn't be happening. So um, number three says potential legal remedies for unlawful discrimination. So below, um, so viola violations of fair housing laws may result in monetary civil fines um, and uh, punitive damages, attorney fees and costs. But below there's some protective classes and it talks about all the different uh, classes of uh, protected folks that are um, that could be discriminated against and they shouldn't be but you can see here that there's um, you know several boxes so um, take a second to take a look at it while i talk about the california department of real estate requires trainees and supervision to prevent housing discrimination by real estate licensees so um here's the thing so we shouldn't be going through this, but we are. Um, so you need supervision for your new agents. So um, agents, if you have a question and maybe you're representing a seller or a buyer that's uh, kind of giving off that vibe, definitely make it known. Um, Realtor organizations prohibit dis discrimination. NAR Code of Ethics, Article 10 prohibits discrimination in employment practices or in rendering real estate license services Age, again, excuse me, any person because of race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familial status, national or, origin, sexual orientation, or gender identity by realtors, um, who is required to comply with fair housing laws. This talks about anybody or anything, any entity that's required to um, uh, comply with this. So pretty much any, anybody involved in any kind of real estate business uh, needs to comply by this. Um, and then below there's examples of conduct that may not be uh, motivated by discriminatory intent. So meaning like, hey, the situation happened. I wasn't, I wasn't causing discrimination, but you know what? Maybe the person felt that I was. Uh, so for example, prior to accepting an offer, asking for or offering buyer personal information or letters from the buyer. When we had a really hot market, uh, a lot of you got letters. A lot of us got letters from agents and from buyers. Um, th those types of documents may inadvertently reveal or be perceived as revealing protected status information, thereby increasing the risk of actual or conscious bias and potentially illegal claims. Basically, if it's not okay to send a letter out. Um, you, you don't want to discriminate against other people because they didn't. So definitely would not um, uh, have a letter from the buyer go out. Also refusing to rent an upper level unit to an elderly tenant out of concern for the tenant's ability to navigate the stairs or a house with a pool because there's young kids there. You, you should never assume that somebody can't climb stairs or, or the kids are going to be in harm's way with the pool. Um, that's what insurance is for. And, you know, quite frankly, like we talked about, if uh, they qualify to buy the home or rent the home, 
they should definitely be able to do so um, without being discriminated against. Um, examples of unlawful or improper conduct. So there's a bunch of examples here. Um, one of them that I want to cover uh, is blockbusting number letter C, uh, or causing panic selling by inducing a listing, sale, or rental based on the grounds of loss of value of property, increase in crime, or decline in quality of the school school quality due to entry or prospective entry of people in protected categories into the neighborhood. So what that means is anybody in this category right here that's wanting to enter um, uh, blockbusting, that's what I, but panic selling is really interesting to me because we just came out of a really hot market and the market is shifting a little bit, different video, but th this is interesting because I get calls all the time from clients that are like, hey John, I talked to you a couple months ago, um, What I'm really looking at, uh, I'm thinking about selling the home now, what do you think? Um, do, you, do you think I, I lost any any equity? So I have to be really careful with that because I cannot have the client panic sell. I am definitely allowed to talk to the client about market conditions um, within reason. So you can't call your client and go, hey man, you need to sell right now because you know what? Um, you're gonna lose equity and, and let's get the listing right now. Let me send it to you. So you gotta be real careful about that. Um, if the client calls you and wants to know, hey, how's the market? You could definitely tell them like, hey, the interest rates are this today. Um, the market is definitely shifting. I'm seeing a slowdown. Um, are you still interested in selling? Yeah, I'm still interested in selling. What do you think my value would be? Great, so let me go ahead and show you. Same thing goes for buyers. Um, you know, you, you can't panic offer based on what you think the value is. You have to be real careful about that. So that one is real interesting to me. Um, but there are things on here like denying a home loan or homeowner's insurance, uh, using a different qualification criteria or procedures, this is letter J, for sale or rental of housing such as income standards, application requirements, like, you know, that, that's, you, know, you got to be real careful there. Um, uh, taking an adverse action based on protected characteristics, you got to be, you know, real careful there. But then there's also examples of positive practices. So real estate licensees working with buyers or tenants should apply the same objective um, property selection criteria such as location, neighborhood, property features, price range, and other considerations to all prospects. So you got to always be professional. Um, always use the same um, uh, the same regard you would for one client for another. So treat everybody equally, uh, and and don't don't assume that one person can't qualify over the other. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory, common sense stuff, but. Um, I do appreciate the fact that this disclosure and advisory is out because uh, unfortunately, sadly, we still need it. There are also fair housing resources such as HUD, um, dre.ca.gov um, to file complaints. Uh, number 12 uh, talks about limited exceptions to fair housing requirements. No person should rely on any exception below without first seeking legal advice uh, about whether the exception applies to their situation. So. If you have some sort of situation, guys, I am not an attorney. I'm going to tell you throughout um, this series. Uh, so definitely rely on um, your car legal um, advice line. It's a hotline specifically for us. It's free. You can ask them any question and they will answer it to the best of their ability. Um, but basically some of these are, are limited exceptions, like for example, an owner of a single family residence who resides at the property with one lodger may be exempt from FEHA for rental purposes provided no real estate licensee is involved in the rental. An owner of a single family residence may be exempt from FHA for sale or rental purposes provided no real estate licensee is involved in the sale or rental and no discriminatory advertising is used and the owner owns no more than three single family residences, other restrictions apply. So definitely take a look at that. Um, but that's basically it for this disclosure, guys. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. If you have any questions on anything that I cover on any page, please leave a comment below in the description. Uh, I love to answer comments and I would love to answer any questions that you have. Don't forget to like this video. The more likes we get, the more it spreads. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for part three. That's coming up next. Talk to you soon. Take care.